I came out to my mom earlier this year, but mm. she kind of like ignored it. Yeah. And like when I talked to her about this, she was like, oh, they might set you up with a real nice man. And like, you know, I was like, oh, yeah. 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 Um. <laughs> Hey good humans, Timmy here. If you're like me, I take my skincare routine seriously. No, like actually seriously. This portion of the video is sponsored by Neutrogena. But that doesn't mean that I don't like to keep it as simple as much as possible. When setting your routine, finding a cleanser that's gentle on your skin and doesn't dry you out can be difficult. But when you do find it, it's like first love. And a fave of mine that I've been loving lately is today's sponsor, Neutrogena's Hydro Boost Gel Cleanser. With the formula that lathers so nicely, rinses clean, and can come fragrance free, it easily checks off all the boxes I look for in a staple cleanser. Suitable for dry skin? Check. Sensitive skin? Done. Acne prone? You got it. And its secret ingredient? The hyaluronic acid formula that's clinically proven to improve overall skin appearance and feelings of skin sensitivity in four weeks. Seriously, nothing beats the freshness I feel every morning when I wash my face and the sense of relief I get when taking off my face at the end of the day. Clean, silky, and soft. Shop the Hydro Boost Gel Cleanser online or at your nearest store and let's be skincare besties. Click the link in the description box below to find out where you can get yours today. Thank you to Neutrogena for sponsoring this portion of the video. Now let's get into the video. Hi, my name's Amanda Pack. I'm 22 years old. I'm a filmmaker and my love print is RWPG. Hi, my name is Carrie. I'm 25 years old. I'm a founder of a nonprofit and I also work in public policy and my love print type is RIPG. So I have been in a series of like longer term relationships. I personally love love. So uh, if you were to ask my friends, they'd be like, Carrie falls really easily. I also idealize and uh, often get hurt because of that. Don't know if I'm proud of that, but that is what happens. I've been single for like almost five years. So I've seen two people in a romantic relationship just really unconditionally love and support each other. And I think I'm personally ready to give and receive that kind of unconditional love and support. Yeah, wait, uh, yeah. I'm Amanda. I'm Carrie. Carrie, nice, yeah, to, nice meet to meet you. Nice to you. Oh gosh. Do you so want to have some tea? I or? would love some tea. This yeah. is so gorgeous. Let's do it. Tea kettle. Oh, ooh, oh, I got you, I got you. Hold Thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Do you want to? Yes. Cheers. Okay. Cheers. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> yeah. Cheers. Okay. okay. Right. That's good. It is nice good. Tea. It is very, very good calming. tea. I like it. Yeah, I love your pants, by the way. Thank you. So I love your outfit, oh, and I like it too. Oh, too many colors. Too many colors. Too many colors. So good. Do you wanna? You can. Yes, ask the I can. First? I can kick it off. Oh my goodness. <laughs> let's go. Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> what item has the most <laughs> sentimental value to you? It's a little embarrassing to me, but I'm just gonna no, go for it. But um, it. I have like the the blanket that my Aww. parents used for me like when I was born. I still have that blanket That's with so me. Cute. It's like a, a comfort like piece for me. Yeah. I was gonna say, is it, how's the condition of it right yeah. now? No, I would not show that on camera. That's okay. <laughs> not yeah, so, at all. Okay, that is, that is a, a sentimental thing I think are meant to be kept like just close to the heart. Close to the heart, yeah. yeah close absolutely. to the heart away from the world. No, no, that's <laughs> yeah. good. I don't know if she knows that I have it, but I have it. It's a ring from my grandmother. I love any like item that's passed on for me. I have such a bigger appreciation for it now than I think I did when I was younger. But I'm embarrassed to admit it because I keep losing it, but it always gets found. Maybe it's like symbolic for like, I'll always find my way even if I get lost. No, this, that's a beautiful story. Thank you. And I'm thinking, right where now. the hell is that ring? <laughs> it's in my room, it's in my room. Next one. Oh, okay. What is your most terrible memory? 
<laughs> what is my most terrible memory? Terrible is quite an adjective as Ooh. well. Okay, I'll just give like an overview of like the themes of it rather than going into detail. But I think my most terrible memories are love related, which is like shitty, but like, you know, it's sure. like, it is like uh, what it is for me and a lot of folks I know. Um, and particularly memories of like me, you know, trusting that a space is safe and it ended up not being safe. Um, whether that was, you know, with, you know, family, relationships in the future, so. Safety, I think, is a very interesting word that I think I've also been yeah. thinking about a lot more mm -hmm. in terms of like relationships, yeah. just like in any space where you're vulnerable or intimate, you know? Mm -hmm. When I think about maybe my most terrible memories, it was kind of somewhat of like where my trust was betrayed yeah. or, and I think in a lot of ways, when your trust is betrayed, you know, you don't feel mm -hmm. safe. Yeah, I've been framing my life in like kind of like with safety in yeah. a lot of ways. So it was really well, interesting you brought that up. Can I ask a follow up question to that? Mm -hmm. Like, what is what is it that makes you feel safe and comfortable? I'm a very like gut person. Like, I feel safe from like a feeling. You know, mm -hmm. that feeling of security that someone sees me. And yeah, I think there's like a tenderness to safety too. Mm -hmm. um, it t does take a long time in order for me to feel safe. I think that that's yeah. something that needs to be built, mm -hmm. for sure. Okay. First, can I ask you what color you are? Oh, I am the color grape. Ooh, I'm pistachio. Oh! Let's go into oh, it. Okay. <laughs> I'm like pretty guarded. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. I guess, how do you feel about being assessed as guarded? Yeah, I mean, I think it's pretty accurate. In, in the beginning, I'm perhaps very willing and open and then something happens and I'm like, oh my God, no, I can't. I don't know if I could do this. Mm -hmm. And then I get really scared. I also, I was like, this is very accurate. Yeah. You know, I know that I'm a very guarded person and mm -hmm. I think it just protects me emotionally from things and I think no one else is gonna look out for me and my emotions except for me, mm -hmm. I guess, has always been the posture that I've held yeah. about that. Uh, What's your motto? There are no words. Oh. It's a little romantic, and I feel I like I, I like ro romance, yeah, I, so. I also like romance. But that being said, my motto is, give me a teeny bit of space. <laughs> oh my goodness, okay, okay. Let's see what's going on. Oh, this one's nice. <laughs> what is your most treasured memory? Oh, okay. That's a fun one. We're, we're I, I see what they're doing. Yeah, I yeah. see, I, the, the, the math is mathing. This is gonna sound a little nerdy and <laughs> lame, but oh. I think it was when I got the acceptance letter from the college that I ended up going to. Aww. It was just like a really gratifying moment for me where I felt like a lot of the intentional work that I put in paid off yeah. in, in a way. The one that comes to my mind, and I always like struggle thinking about this without like tearing up, but I will try to not tear up this time and I can do it, no I can do it. My mom and I went on like a trip with just the two of us to Disneyland. <laughs> it's like not oh much gosh. of a trip we grew up, like kind of close to me. <laughs> I don't remember a lot of my childhood, but one memory that I do remember a lot is my mom and I like sitting in like the little like storybook gondola and like looking mm -hmm. at the miniature little princess thing. <laughs> I remember thinking back at that time when I was a little bit older, I was like, why did my mom just take me in like, Disneyland's a lot of money to like, you know, there's, there's just so many factors in her being able to do that for me. That was a really, really happy time for me. So mm. shout, shout out to my mom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Woo, okay, oh wait, it's you. Oh, is it? I think it's you. It's me, mm -hmm. okay, you got cool. this, yes. When was the last time that you really cried? Oh. I cry a lot, <laughs> but right now I'm, they're like little cries. I'm like, little, you know, just like <laughs> and then I'm fine. teary eyed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I so I think the last time that I really cried was probably beginning of this year. I was tailing off of like a situationship. I have a lot of trouble with intimacy, just generally. I think it was in a situation where I didn't feel very safe. So on my way back from feeling that way, my best cries are in a car. Like dark, Ooh, all too yeah. well. Taylor Swift 10 minute version came out. <laughs> you just wanted to wreck yourself. At <laughs> exactly, that point. Yeah. and I was like, you know what? I'm doing this on purpose. Like, and so that happened. So that was that. What about you? Ooh. It was last night. Um, I I, had, I was talking with my mom. I I kind of got into an argument mm -hmm. with her. Um, I'm non-binary. Mm -hmm. uh, I use they them pronouns, and so okay. I feel like I, I came out to my mom earlier this year, but. Mm -hmm. 
she kind of like ignored it. Yeah. And like when I talked to her about this, she was like, oh, they might set you up with a real nice man. And like, you know, I was like, oh, yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> so I got to a point where I was talking with my mom and I was like, mm -hmm. did you ever consider that this date would not be with a man? Mm -hmm. And then she was like, is it not with me? And I was like, mom, I literally don't know. Um, yeah. Similarly, uh, with my mom, I like came out to her, not on like my own terms. Um, we're in that stage where she's not really acknowledging and she's also like, I met this boy at church today. You should meet him. And I'm like, girl, firstly, you in a different Do state. Do we have the same like, mom? I don't know. <laughs> like, oh. It's not that she's doubled down on it after you know, we sort of had a conversation about my sexuality, but I don't know if I'm at that point where I can have a head-on conversation and be like, well, what if I bring home somebody that's not a man? Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. A, I don't know if it's much of a conversation, me, whereas like mm. just me kind of like stating the facts yeah. and she's just like, I don't know, what to, you know, yeah. it's, it's hard. Anyway, yeah. okay, next question. Um, what does it actually mean to be vulnerable with your partner? That is a good question. I think vulnerability is both working to create like, mutually safe spaces uh, for each other and also working to like communicate, not just in the way that you like to be communicated, or like I would like to be communicated with, but also me creating a space where they feel comfortable communicating as well. Mm -hmm. Vulnerability is definitely a two-way street, you yeah. know, like both sides have to kind of be equally working and I think that that can be a hard balance to find. Um, thinking beyond just myself yeah. um, is a big one too. I think that's a sign that like, you're maybe ready to be vulnerable yeah. or that this is someone that you, know, you maybe desire to be vulnerable with. Okay, you will now experience four minutes of eye contact in complete silence. Great. Cool. Okay. <laughs> All right, so close your eyes, take a deep breath, and begin. <laughs> At first I laughed because that's like my visceral reaction, so I was like, oh no, and then I got really anxious. To be honest, I'm not too uncomfortable in silences. Silences kind of are like, you know, a mark of safety almost sometimes. I can definitely see how that fosters a deeper bond because that's really vulnerable. It's just to like stare at each other for so long. In the beginning half, I mainly focused on looking at her, but then there were like moments in the second half where I kind of let myself be seen by her. I'm really sitting here like looking into the eyes of another person. I don't know where this will go, uh, but I feel you, you know, so, yeah. I didn't know, like, how vulnerable I was gonna be, but I think I ended up, like, sharing a, a bit more than I thought I would, and I think that was a lot due to, you know, Carrie and, like, the person she was, um, yeah. Now, you have to make a decision. <laughs> you can go back in if you feel like you want to continue exploring this relationship mm -hmm. romantically, or you can leave right now if you don't feel like there's a true romantic connection. Do you have any idea which way you want to go? Carrie, I feel so lucky to have shared this experience with you. I loved getting to know you in such a safe and intimate way. You are a special human. 
I know that for sure. In terms of a romantic future, I'm not too confident, but on a human to human level, I'd love to get to know you more. Can I talk? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. No, I mean, I think that feels good. I think like this is, you know, I, I wasn't expecting any sort of outcome in any way. And I think I was, you know, just lucky to have this experience as well. That's what she said here, so, or what they said there. Yeah, this, this is good, yeah, yeah.